Hello everybody, happy Friday and welcome to my channel. Thank you for joining me on another narrated walking tour of Georgetown, Penang. In today's walk, we will explore and discover Beach Street, which is one of the oldest streets in Malaysia. I say so because this street is older than many of the cities in the peninsula, including Kuala Lumpur, Ipoh, Seremban and even Singapore. But before we start, let me first give you our starting point coordinates. Key these coordinates into your GPS, Google Maps or Waze and you will be navigated to the starting point of this walk. Then you can use this video as your virtual tour guide. Beach Street is so rich in history and there's so much to explain that the first historic building is already on the way. Immediately to our left is Bangunan Majlis Agama Islam Pulau Pinang or Penang State Islamic Religious Council building. But it was not so when it was built in the neoclassical style in 1907. Back then, this was the Comta or UTC of Georgetown, then part of the straight settlements. It wasn't a single building, but an ensemble with the construction of the earlier segment commencing in 1884 and different segments being completed in 1889, 1891, 1903 and this segment along Beach Street in 1907. In its totality, it was a U-shaped building with facades facing the newly completed Well King, King Edward Place and of course Beach Street. It was the largest and grandest government office building in Georgetown. What we are seeing today is a mere shadow of what it once was. The government building was bombed during World War II by Allied forces no less and all the segments were destroyed except this one. Across the road is Balai Police Lebu Pantai which is what's left of the central police station complex that I covered in my video on Light Street. And over here is an interpretive board detailing the history of Beach Street or Lebo Pantai as it's called today. This was the commercial heart of Georgetown. In the past, it was known in Penang Hokkien as Ang Mo Tok Hokkien, which means European Commercial Street because most of the businesses on this part of Beach Street belong to Europeans. And anchoring this part of Georgetown were two British banks, the Chartered Bank on this side of Beach Street and the Hong Kong and Shanghai Banking Corporation on the other. The HSBC was where my own late mother made history by becoming one of the first women in Malaysia to work in a bank. That HSBC building was completed at about the same time my mother began her banking career, which was in the wake of the Second World War. Here we get a peek at Downing Street, a rather short street in Penang, and named after an even shorter street in London but one of great significance. Number 10 Downing Street in London is the official residence of the Prime Minister of the UK. There's no number 10 in Penang, but number 1 is HSBC. The present HSBC building was designed in the late Art Deco style which was fashionable in the 1940s. It replaces the earlier HSBC building completed in 1906. That building was severely damaged during the war and had to be demolished. Diagonally across the road is the Logan Building. It was originally three stories when built in the 1880s, but by 1930, the top floor had become so run down that it was left with a dangerous building notice. The third floor was then removed and replaced with pilasters in the Art Deco style. On this side, we have the Bank of China building, which originally housed the Netherlands Trading Society. It was completed in 1905 meaning it is older than the earlier HSBC building by a few months. It has a beautiful side facade that has been blocked by the HSBC ever since. As we negotiate this 5 foot way, you can see the arches are rendered in imitation of rustication in conformity to the surrounding streetscape. Over here is a plaque to Henry Alfred Neubronner, the architect who designed this building, the earlier HSBC building next door, and also the 1909 remodeling of the Kapitan Kling Mosque. And now we get to admire the entire length of the Logan building facing Beach Street. The last major restoration was carried out in 2010, but it was the 1930s remodeling that gives it its present appearance. On our left is M Bank Lebo Pantai, one of many banks that make this area Penang's central banking district. With a dense concentration of offices in this area, there has to be somewhere to get food. 
that somewhere is here, the Stray Well Food Court. For many visitors, it's their intro to Penang's famous hawker fair. And of the many stalls here, right in front is Georgetown's most popular pack and nasi lemak stall. This is Ali Nasi Lemak, a place to get a relatively inexpensive meal. A single packet is not very filling, so you might consider getting two. On this side, you can see the various options available. The price has risen over the years and was 2 ringgit per packet when I shot this. But before I managed to publish this video, the price has risen again and is now 250 per packet as of 12 September 2022. If you can't take spicy food, there's a whole lot of other hawker fare for you to try in this food court. We won't dwell too long over here. I have a separate YouTube channel for food court Let's Eat. Join me there for my food discoveries. Over here, we find a historic post box. The monogram VR is the royal siphon denoting Victoria Regina. It means that this post box dates to the reign of Queen Victoria. Under Queen Elizabeth II, the royal cipher was E to R, and with the proclamation of King Charles III, we will soon see the royal cipher of C 3 R, which reads as Charles III Rex. Across the road is another historic shopping arcade. This is the Whiteaways Arcade, built in the early 1900s and has since been fully restored. It extends from Bishop Street Junction, where it once housed the Whiteaways General Store, to the junction of Church Street, where the Netherlands Indian Bank once was. In my video on Light Street, I mentioned a difference between Beach Street and Light Street. You will recall that Light Street is as straight as an arrow. Beach Street, on the other hand, curves to the right because it follows the contours of the beach. But where's the beach? There's not one in sight. To explain this, let me show you the name of this street which is a unique feature to Georgetown, Penang. This is Gat Lebo Gareja or Church Street God. The word Gat or God means this is an extension to the street on the other side. At the junction of Beach Street and Church Street God is India House, built in 1937 and best known for its elephant head sculpture. Looking across Beach Street, we see Church Street with Kong Soon House built in 1914 on its left. But a hundred years before Kong Soon House was built, there was no Church Street card. This side of Beach Street was indeed the sea. To create land for warehousing, a massive reclamation project was carried out under Frederick Well between 1883 and 1889. It extended the shoreline beyond Beach Street, and from then on, Beach Street is beach only by name. Until then, there were stone steps from the beach to the water's edge. Those stone steps were known as God, a word that the British brought over from British India. When the streets were extended into the reclaimed land, they replaced the guards but have the word God attached to their names. So Church Street was extended to Church Street God and so on. As we walk down Beach Street, we will find that the streets branching out on the left are named by adding God to the original streets on the right. Beach Street has transformed tremendously over the past 200 years. During the time of Captain Francis Light, it was covered with mangrove and forests. After the forest was cleared, a beach was created with guards for sampans and prahus to birth. The third quarter of the 19th century was a boom time for Penang's economy. The Industrial Revolution in England coincided with the discovery of large deposits of tin in Larut. That and the introduction of steamships turned the Penang Harbour into a hive of activity. That gave rise to an urgent need for warehousing, and this changed the appearance of Beach Street forever. The oldest building is this one, built in 1886 when reclamation is in full swing across the road. To its right, the grey one in Art Deco style dates to 1938. The entire ensemble today belongs to OCBC Bank. The main branch is right here, while the other buildings are used for premier banking. On our left is the construction of a hotel called the Rice Miller, but I think the project has stalled. If completed, it would stretch all the way from Beach Street to Welke. Next is another historic building, this one from the 1920s, built for the estate of Tiao Tiao Siat, better known as Jiong Fatsi. 
On the right side of the road are high-rise bank buildings, and sandwiched between them is China Street. Called Tuake or Main Street in Penang Hokkien, it was the principal street for Chinese businesses in the 19th century. We have arrived at the junction of China Street Card and across from it the Ban Hindi Bank building from the late 1930s. On this side of China Street Card is Georgetown Dispensary from 1923. It was designed by David McCloy Craig of the architecture firm of Swan and McLaren. Here we are looking north on B Street and sideways to China Street. In future, I will do videos walking down these side streets, but for now, we'll stay on Beach Street. The area is so rich in history and there's so much that I can talk about, but I'll keep on moving. My walking tour offers only a scratch on the surface. If you're interested in the history of streets and buildings, do visit my website, Penang Travel Tips, where I document thousands of sites not only in Penang, but also in Kuala Lumpur, Singapore, and all the major towns in Malaysia. I am like a sponge that continues to absorb information, to quench my own curiosity, and to share the information with everybody. I am sure most of you would know that Penang is a major food destination in Malaysia. But if you want to know about food, particularly Penang food, you have got to make a trip to this place, the Wonderfood Museum. Using life-size as well as larger-than-life replicas, this place is a glorious celebration of food. I have mentioned earlier that land reclamation was carried out to create space for warehouses which are called go-downs. While the properties along Beach Street Frontage offers the commercial phase to the businesses, the go-downs are located in the rear, often accessed through passages like this. With harbour cargo activities in Georgetown having ceased and relocated to the Butterworth Container Terminal, the go-downs have fallen into disuse. Some are today finding a new lease on life as cafes, eateries, and art galleries. They are easier reached through Victoria Street, which we will cover in future. This row of buildings on the left has undergone what I consider the architectural equivalent of plastic surgery. These are pre-war shop houses, originally in the traditional style, but in the 1940s were given a facial treatment in the Art Deco style. On our right is Market Street. This street is the entrance to Georgetown's Little India. The street was so named because there was once a wet market here. A market that is now gone and forgotten. On this side, there now stands a multi-storey car park. Before the car park was built, there was a road called Market Street Court. But before the street was laid, before the land was reclaimed, there was the guard to which brahus would bring market produce. The urban morphology of Georgetown is such that so much has changed on a single piece of land over the past 200 years. And even today, the city continues to evolve. Where once the migrants were from southern China and India and Sumatra, today the city is receiving foreign workers from Bangladesh and Myanmar. You would recall, when we started this walk, the architecture was colonial and European. Then we passed through China Street and now Little India. Like water from different rivers, the various cultures mix and blend in this melting pot that's Georgetown. As the different communities grow and recede, areas that were once predominantly of one community are often colonized by another. Having left Market Street behind, we are also moving away from Little India and into the Chinese commercial area. In a city with a large Chinese population, it is hard to pinpoint where is Chinatown. But you notice that the businesses have become Chinese, and of the various Chinese businesses, the one that stands out right here is the famous Chinese confectionery Gi Hyang. Founded in 1856, this is Penang's oldest traditional pastry maker and is possibly the oldest in the country. Today, they have modernized and have a web presence, but they retain their brand mascot, which is the Gi Hyang Baby. Our walk takes us now to the intersection of Chule Street and Chule Street Court, which brings part one of this video to an end. 
In part 2, we will continue with the second half of this walk. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you've enjoyed this walk. Do give this video a like and subscribe to this channel for more walks like this one. There are so many places I want to show you. Until we meet again, hopefully next Friday. Thanks for watching.